Hello everyone, this is Aaron, and uh, this video is going to be on the Naive Bayes classification. Uh, I know Dana kind of went over the theory and the equations, so I'm going to try to go over examples. Um, just do several examples to show you how the, the Naive Bayes um, works in practice. So the Naive Bayes is a simple probabilistic classifier based on applying Bayes theorem with strong independence assumptions and the assumptions part is what it's kind of um, the naive part of this um, classification we uh, assume that the features or the pieces of evidence that will occur during this process are all independent to each other and we also assume that the evidence will occur or the features will occur and and that's why it's um, <clears throat> deemed naive because in a real world um, if you have a test set um, where you're trying to determine the difference between a cat an elephant and a bike uh, what happens if you run an image that is a car uh, you're gonna get a, an error or you're gonna get a, a false reading so that's why um, we make these assumptions but it makes the um, the classification kinda naive but it still works pretty good the same so here's the um, Bayes rule in its simplest form. The probability of H given E is equal to the probability of E given H occurring times the probability of H all divided by the probability probability of E. The basic idea of Bayes rules is that the outcome of a hypothesis of an event H can be predicted based on some evidences that we observe. So the priori probability of H is the probability of an event before the evidence is observed, which is this term right here, called the priori term. Uh, the posterior probability of H is what we're essentially trying to calculate using the Bayes theory, is the probability of, of an, an event after the evidence is observed, which is this term right here. So here's your here's what we're trying to find out, whether the probability of an event happening given that we see the ev the evidence happening first this term right here is your likelihood term um, assuming that a feature happens given a certain class this is your priori term the probability that you can assume before you even see um, evidence of it and this term down here, the denominator, that's also referred to as the the evidence term. You have to see um, features, evidence of features, before you could um, figure out what it is. So, looking at a basic example, um, we want to predict the probability of it raining um, using some evidences evidences such as a dark cloud. So you look out into the sky and you see a dark cloud and you're wondering if it's going to rain or not. So H is the event of raining and E is the evidence which is uh, the dark cloud. So the, what's the probability of it raining given that you see a dark cloud? Well to find that out you have to determine first the probability of a dark cloud given that it's going to rain times the probability of it raining all divided by the probability of a dark cloud. So the probability of a dark cloud given that it's raining is the probability that there is a dark cloud when it rains. Of course um, a dark cloud could occur in many other events such as an overcast day or a forest fire um, but we only consider dark cloud in the context of a, an event raining. So that's why this term right here I refer to it as the likelihood term. Um, for that exact reason that just because you see a dark cloud in the sky doesn't mean that it's it's gonna rain it could just be an overcast day or uh, like this sentence said that it, there could be a forest fire which uh, created the dark cloud so the next term uh, is probability of raining your priori term is the um, probability of it raining this probability can be obtained from statistical records so you could you could get this um, the value using statistical data. Um, same thing with the dark cloud. Um, it's the ev it's the probability of the evidence of the dark cloud occurring. 
So now to show an example of the naive Bayes classifier, we have a simple example here illustrated of two, um, two classes, a red class and a green class. Um, the nice thing about this example is that the um, classes are clustered very nicely together. There's no um, mixing of the colors. It's, it's pretty much everything. Um, you could draw almost a line right here. Everything to the right of it is green. Anything to the left is pretty much red. Um, you could also see that there's twice as many green as there are red. So without running a test subject through this um, classifier, you could assume that it's twice it's probable that any um, term you want to test through this is probably going to be green just because there's twice as many green. And um, like I said, if you draw a line here, the area to the right is twice as big as the area <coughs> to the left, which uh, represents the red class. So just with this given information, we could find out the priori terms for both class for both um, classes. And that's simple. Um, we don't have to use any normal distribution function or any other type of function. Um, just by eyeballing it or observing, you could um, figure out the priori term for the green class by the number of green divided by the total number of um, objects. And same for the red priori term. Um, total number of red dots by the total number of, uh, divided by the total number of dots. So for the green, it's 40 dots out of 60. And red, it's 20 dots out of 60. So you can see the green is twice as much as the red. So now we want to put this into practice. And we're going to use a test a test subject, which is this white dot here. So given that we we find out we we just we formulated our prior probability for each class, now we want to test to see which class uh, this white dot belongs to. So now that we now we need to figure out what our likelihood term is, the likelihood of x given that it's a green, and the likelihood of x given that it's a red class. Also. You don't really need to do much, um, use any other functions. You can kind of just um, use your eyeball. So we're going to draw the circle around it of equal radius. And to find out the likelihood term for the green is the number of green in the vicinity of x divided by the total number of greens in the whole uh, picture. Same thing for red. So when you draw that circle, there's one green. Uh, in the vicinity out of four total uh, green dots. And the likelihood for the red is there's three red dots out of the total number of 20 red dots. So now that we have the likelihood term and the priori term, we could find out the posterior um, and classify that white dot. So the posterior of the probability of X, that white dot being green, being a part of the green class, we take our this term was the original 40 divided by 60, which was the priori term for green, and we're multiplying it by the likelihood term of green, which is one, uh, 1 divided by 40. So when we do that product, we get 1 in 60. <clears throat> Same thing for the uh, posterior of red, 2 divided by 6 times 2 divided by 20, and we get 1, 20, 1 over 20. So the um, classification part comes in uh, determining which posterior term is the highest. And um, when you figure that out, that white dot gets classified to a certain class, either red or green. So obviously, 1 in 20 is a much higher number than 1 in 60. So this white dot right here is going to be classified as red. So the explanation of the, the naive Bayes classification, um, it's better it, to better predict an outcome of an event, it's better to have more pieces of evidence, or in our case, for image. Um, classification more features. Um, the more features you have, the better the accuracy of the classification classification will occur. Um, however, when you determine these features or pieces of evidence, it must be relative to what you're trying to classify, which means it must make sense. Um, as I went earlier in the video, the example of raining, given that you see a dark cloud, um, if you choose a feature that's um, or a piece of evidence as earthquake, 
it's not really going to pertain well with that situation and that since raining is not related to to the evidence of an earthquake um, just because of an, an earthquake doesn't mean that it, it will rain it can but it doesn't mean that it always will or the probability is high that it will another another um, problem with determining the amount of features or uh, is determining features that are dependent on one another um, for example the evidence of a dark cloud directly depends on the evidence of high humidity um, dependencies into a model will make will make it very complicated and might make your model um, inaccurate and, and result in errors because um, one evidence could depend on many other evidences or one feature could depend on multiple other features and and that's another reason why um, the word naive is used so here's the um, Bayes rule it, which w pertains more to our case of using multiple features uh, multiple evidences the probability of um, H happening given that you see these features occurring is equal to the probability of the features given the class times the probability of the class all divided by the probability of the features occurring and with the assumption of the independence the naive part we can break this numerator up into um, independent terms so the the probability of one feature happening given in the class times the probability of the second feature happening <clears throat> given the class all the way up to the nth feature occurring given the class and um, again this um, priori term the probability of the class all divided by the evidence term uh, the, the, the fact that you actually see all these features occurring so here's another example um, based off of our first example of probability of it raining given a dark cloud well this time we added now there's um instead of one feature there's three features there's the dark cloud feature wind speed and humidity feature <clears throat> so using the example uh, the uh, equation here these are all independent events so to find the um, posterior um, to find the answer to this posterior term you multiply the probability of a dark cloud given that it's going to rain, probability of having high wind speed given that it's going to rain, and the probability of high humidity given that it's rain, that it's going to rain, times the probability of it raining, all divided by the probability of all three features 